Oh, hey there. Happy Monday morning. My broken chainsaw lineup is getting smaller. I better slow down or I'm going to run out of work. So on today's edition of What Did I Do to My Saw? We are going to start with the steel MS290. It's here because it won't start. I'll see you over at the workbench. Good morning and welcome back to my workbench. Today we have the steel MS290 on the bench. The gentleman who dropped this off said that the saw won't start, that the pull start won't pull out, and that he had it um, in for repair somewhere else recently, and they did some kind of repair to the recoil, and he thinks that they put it together incorrectly. <clears throat> when he brought this in, he requested um, an instant fix because he thought it was probably no big deal. I try to avoid this sort of thing. Um, I have guys walk in our showroom all day, every day, requesting instant little fixes. It'll only take you a second. It's just a little this, it's just a little that. It'll just take you a minute. The problem is, is if I tried to do all those one second and one minute fixes, all the saws that are here to be fixed, I would never ever get to them. So I don't offer instant repairs. And in most cases, the customer that's dropping his saw off doesn't know what's wrong with it anyways. So for example, I'm told that all the saw has is a recoil problem. So I should be able to fix this saw in about one minute, according to the customer. While we're on this topic, this may be unbelievable to a lot of you, but I have a lot of guys come in here wanting to buy a bar and chain for their chainsaw, and they don't know how to install the bar and or the chain on their saw. I think that if you're going to own a chainsaw, you should know how to put a bar and chain on it. So every time someone comes in to buy a chain or a bar, I can't be running to the front to put a chain on when I'm in the middle of a repair, it's just not reasonable. Okay, so we're gonna get started on this MS290, but before we do, I just wanted to say that I've been doing this for uh, quite a long time, and I had no idea that anybody would ever want to watch me fix chainsaws, but apparently you do. The subscriptions, the views, the comments, um, this the super what do you call them super chat super thanks um you have completely blown my mind if i had known that there was people out there wanting to watch this sort of thing i would have started this a long time ago i've been watching youtube for a long long time um there's lots of other small engine people on youtube that i've spent a lot of time watching Chicanic in the U.S. is a big one. Um, I watch Donnie Boy. I watch Terrell. Um, I watch Tin Man. Um, Donnie Walker out west. Um, there's so many of you. Um, Buck and Billy Ray. And I watch all of them. And I thought, people must like this sort of stuff. So I'm going to give it a try. So as long as you keep watching... I'm going to keep on filming it. If you find any type of value in my content, or maybe you just find it entertaining, please subscribe to my channel. That tells me that you like what you're seeing and that you want to see more of it. Thank you. Let's get down to business. So he says that this thing won't start and the, pull, the cord won't pull out. Well, I think he's right about that. Definitely something wrong there. So before I pull this recoil off, let's just have a little walk around on this chainsaw. I know there's tons of MS290s out there. Actually, the very first steel chainsaw I ever laid my hands on was an MS290. 
and it turns out it had been straight gassed. I think there's still pieces of it out back. So the first thing I notice is the chain. It's very dull. That chain wouldn't cut through butter. And whoever's sharpening this is sharpening it incorrectly. Um, that bar, I don't know what kind of bar that is. I see some orange writing on there, but I'm not, not sure what type of bar or, oh, chain, Carlton chain. The sticker is still kind of on the front of it there. Maybe the saw hasn't seen a lot of use. Usually that sticker's long gone. The plastics and the handles and... It's actually in pretty good shape for a 290. I've seen these beaten to a pulp. I believe this saw shares a body with two other saws. So the 290, the 390, and the 310. Different piston and cylinders, but the same carcass. Let's pull the recoil off of the saw and see if we can find the problem. So four T27s, one, two, three, four. If the customer's correct, I should have the saw fixed in about 60 seconds. Well, everything, everything in that recoil seems to be functioning just fine. With the recoil off, there's our flywheel, there's our coil. Okay, the flywheel, something, something's preventing the flywheel from turning. That's why the recoil wouldn't, the rope wouldn't pull out. It wasn't the recoil, it was something bigger than that. So this isn't an instant fix after all. I just watched a video like this from Steve's Small Engine Saloon on a Husqvarna that was locked up. Good thing I watched that video. Let's dig deeper. So the coil and the flywheel are not touching. It's not a common thing, but if the coil ever did, say, vibrate loose or something, and the coil was, and the flywheel was hitting it, it, it could happen, but that's not what's happening here. There's clearance between them. I'm gonna get the barn chain off this thing, make this easier to work on. Very clean saw. Let's take the clutch drum off. That was tough to get off because there is a buildup right around there. And that's what it was getting caught on. There's the clutch bearing. It's 
So I guess we'll go ahead and remove the clutch. We'll take the top cover off here and pull the spark plug out. Okay, so on the MS290, get the cover off. Just turn that to the left. This saw is very clean. Air filter is not terrible. I've seen a lot worse. There's our summer winter shutter. Take that off. Take that air filter off. It's due for a cleaning. And I'll pull that spark plug out. Looks like a Bosch plug. Maybe it's the original plug. Um, something's missing on this plug. Do you see that? Uh-oh. So I've worked on a lot of chainsaws. I can honestly say that this is the first time I've ever seen this. There I have, here's a used plug that was sitting on my desk here. You see what's missing? So I call that an electrode. It's what grounds the spark. The spark plug is missing it. It looks like it quit but I wonder how far it got. Where do you think that thing went? Okay, so I think the next thing that we should do is take a look down into the piston and cylinder. Let me, get, let me grab my camera and see what we can see down there. Oh my. Oh, the top of the piston all hammered. That little electrode must have been bouncing around in here. Holy. That's too bad. Otherwise, it looked... It looked okay in here. Oh, look over there on the bottom of the screen. It had been stuck in there between the piston and the port. Oh boy. Okay, here's where we're at. The saw came in because the pull cord wouldn't pull out. Flywheel won't turn. We pulled the plug off and found it missing its electrode. The piston and cylinder are hammered by that missing electrode. The electrode is still missing and the flywheel won't turn. So it's in this engine somewhere. I'm guessing this customer doesn't want to spend money to find out where it is, but uh, I'm going to spend my time and figure out where it is. Let's go. So I just went and called this customer, told him what's going on here, explained this all to him. And he said he appreciates the time in finding out what's going on and 
that uh, I can dispose of this saw for him. So this saw is now my property and I'm going to tear this thing into pieces and find out where the missing spark plug piece went. Come along with me. Let's go. Let's get the fuel out of the saw. His fuel looks good and smells good. That's just a little bit of dirt that I picked off the coil there when I was picking earlier. I'm going to tear this down to the piston and cylinder. Professional saws are easier to do this. 290 isn't the easiest saw, but we're going to tear it apart. I'm going to remove this felling spike. I don't want to get stabbed with those. Muffler. Gasket. That last muffler bolt's being held in by a shield back there, so I'll get that out later. From the exhaust side, that piston looked really good. Let's take the carburetor off. The fuel line and the impulse line are both holding this carb on. So I'm going to pull in the carb and push in the line at the same time and get it off of here. I'm just going to pry the tank vent line off the tank and then I can pull it out. It's a neat little tool from steel. I also unhook my ignition wires. Let's remove these things. Let's take the flywheel and clutch off while I still have something to hang on to here. Piston stop is in. Clutch is in really good shape. The oil pump driver. This might be a very light use saw. 
the more I see, the more I think this the saw wasn't used very heavy. Let's take the flywheel off. Flywheel removal tool. I bought this from Steel. There's the part number right there. 5910 893 0801. So I tighten this on just till it stops and then I go back about a turn just to give the flywheel some room. And there's our flywheel. I have a box here that I'm just putting everything in that comes off the saw. Someone told me that the carb off a 290 will fit on a steel 044 and the 440. I haven't tried it. Anybody on here have any experience with that? Let me know. Let's take this handle off. These things are little buggers. Well, we're getting there. Still seized. Another plug right there on the inside. push with my finger on the intake boot. I want to get this orange 
top cover off. I'm trying to do it in a way that you can see what I'm doing. Here's the impulse line. I remove this white cover. That's what's holding that muffler bolt in there. Just a thought here. I haven't had to do this repair before, but let's say that muffler bolt broke on a 290. Do you have to do all this to get to this muffler bolt? Anybody done this before? My ignition ground. To get the engine out of a 290, the rear bar stud has to come out. So I've put both my bar nuts on it, doubled up there. Lots of red Loctite. I don't know if that's factory or if someone had that out and did that. Let's take the brake handle and assembly out. Got a couple T27s here. Let's fight this brake spring off. This little tool, safety glasses on. I need to pull that C-clip off. piece of plastic. Brake handles off. I'm gonna drain all my bar oil out of the saw.
Let's remove the oil pump. Okay, let's take this oil pump out. That's worth a couple bucks. I'll keep that. Actually, I'll keep every part of the saw just in a parts box labeled what it is, just like Donnie Boy does in his shed. And then as you need parts, you just go back and see if you have them. Let's take the four cylinder bolts out. Okay, so those four bolts are loosened. Now we'll wrestle this engine out of here. I don't take two 90s apart this far every day, so just bear with me. So if you've ever taken your MS-290 or similar chainsaw to a shop and they've called you and said, it's not worth fixing, um, this would be why they said that. So if you were going to rebuild this saw, you would take this saw all apart like we just did. And then you have a whole bunch of cleaning to do. So this saw right now, the equip the replacement is called the 291. And in Canada, they're on sale for $600. So this might be a saw that if you're handy and you do things like this at home, you could rebuild one of these on your own time. But to pay a shop to do it, it's just, this is why they tell you it's not worth fixing. And get all this stuff out of the way. Clean this bench off, and we're going to go into this engine and find out why it won't turn over. Okay, so here we are with our piston and cylinder. A little piece of spark plug. I haven't located it. It's hard to see up in the cylinder, but the top of it is all hammered. The transfer, 
transfer port is damaged. The piston took, piston is deformed on top. See where it was all hammered. Couple chunks missing out of it. The top ring is stuck. The bottom ring is loose. Another piece missing. This thing just kept on running, but that piece broke off the spark plug. I don't know what shape it would be hammered into. Round, flat. I don't know, but I can't find it here. It's not on my desk. I've crawled around on the floor looking for it. Maybe it fell out earlier. I don't really know, but it's not in the muffler. I had a look there. But we can see the damage that was caused. All from the electrode falling off of his spark plug. He said it was the original spark plug. I think this saw is 13 or 14 years old. Maybe a new spark plug once in a while isn't a terrible idea. So there we go. We have a box of parts. Saw in pieces. I have done a complete autopsy on the saw and determine the cause of death to be a broken spark plug, the piece of that spark plug going down into the engine and destroying the piston and the cylinder. Time of death, 7.30 p.m. I have already notified the family. The parts that are remaining will be boxed up and the parts will go back to the chainsaw graveyard. I have lots of saws waiting to be worked on. Let's get to them. Thank you so much for watching.